Hello, and welcome to this new series of videos on PyTorch Lightning. I'm very excited to do these videos because I think they will be very beneficial for your sort of future projects that you will do, and it will be a great tool to add to your toolbox. You know, first of all, I want to sort of go into this video, which will be about why or when you should consider you know, learning PyTorch Lightning. Uh, I think a lot of people are like me who sort of like bare bones PyTorch and haven't really seen the reason why you should learn uh, PyTorch Lightning. And this video will try to explain to you sort of when it's useful to do so and when Lightning can actually be beneficial. I think for many people, if you're just learning about PyTorch, I don't think you should learn about Lightning. I think Lightning is something, it's a wrapper, right? It's built on top of, ten, uh, of PyTorch and it's kind of like, Keras that was built on TensorFlow, right? So, but I think it's better than Keras, even though Keras is pretty awesome. Um, so with that said, for me, uh, why I started to focus and learn about PyTorch Lightning was when I started doing multi-GPU training. So if you're doing single GPU training, then there is some reason to learn Lightning, but I think when you're considering doing sort of training on a cluster with multiple GPU, or you have your own setup with multiple GPUs, uh, you're considering doing distributed training or, um, you know, TPU training or anything of that sort, it's going to be very nice to have Lightning because it just does it for you. You don't have to worry about it. So that's something that's really nice. And also what it says here, um, you know, uh, scale your models, right? That's what the multi-GPU training stuff. And it also says without the boilerplate. So that's the second big benefit, I would say, is that it standardizes every everything for you. And so it makes code more maintainable uh, because you write less of boilerplate code. And when you hear boilerplate code, it might not be clear what I'm exactly referring to. So I'll show you an example uh, later on so you know what it is. But basically, it makes your code more compact, makes it standardized. It makes everything cleaner, I would say. Um, it will be easier to maintain in the long run. And it's, you know, it's hugely popular. As you can see, it has 21,000 stars on GitHub. This is uh, a solid, solid framework. And I think we will, um, it will save us a lot of time to, to learn about this. So for this series uh, of videos, um, I'm going to be showing you the functionality of it sort of one step at a time so that nothing will be overwhelming at first. But in the end, we will have a really sort of solid setup of PyTorch Lightning. All right, so, you know, it's not going to make much sense if I tell you what we're going to go through in this series. But, um, you know, some of the things they talk about here uh, is run your code on any hardware. That's super easy with Lightning. You know, uh, performance and bottleneck profiler, we will do that. Uh, checkpointing, 16-bit precision, logging, metrics, visualization. Uh, they write early stopping here, but really that's uh, something called callbacks, which we can utilize and, you know, is, is really nice. Similar, if you're done Keras, it's a similar functionality. All right, so let me bring you to the code because we're going to be starting off from this code right here, which is uh, code from, I think, the first tutorial I made on PyTorch. <laughs> and it's a uh, it's really simple. It's a fully connected neural network training on MNIST. And you might be, you know, this is a really simple, really simple example, okay? But um, we're going to be, be transferring this code here to Lightning code. And even though what we're doing is a very simple project here, we, I mean, ridiculously simple, but everything we're going to learn is going to transfer so that when you do more complex project, you're, you're just going to be using the same thing. And I did streams last week on uh, Lightning Variational Autoencoder and also fine-tuning Whisper on using PyTorch Lightning. So what I'm going to show you here is um, it, it extends to more advanced projects as well. So I won't go into Lightning code in this video, but I'll just want I just want to show you this code, uh, what what it is, and then introduce you to what we're gonna do in the upcoming one. So we, we have our basic imports here. Um, you know, I'm assuming you know this already. Uh, here we have our basic two linear uh, layer neural network. We set up some hyperparameters. We load our data. 
uh, right here. We set up our uh, our loss, our optimizer, and then we train our network doing you know two for loops, iterating over the epochs and our data, our train loader. Then we do our check accuracy right here, and um, and then we you know we run that function and we check what accuracy we got on the training validation and the test set. So you know hopefully this is nothing scary to you. This is pretty simple stuff really. Uh, and if not, you can check out my PyTorch tutorials. Um, so what we're gonna do in the next video is uh, convert this first uh, this NN module to something called a lightning module. And that's where we're going to start. And then we'll be adding functionality one step at a time so that you master one, one sort of basic concept. Uh, and then we will, you know, as we extend this series, it will come together in a much better format that is to the point and concise so that you can follow it uh, and save a lot of time learning this because, you know, that's the goal, right? Uh, and I wanted to show you also like what I mean by boilerplate code is pretty much this. You see this thing right here? You, you, you create your own uh, function, check, check accuracy. But what if you want to do your own other metric like F1 score or you're doing area, uh, you know, AUROC or you're doing, you know, whatever. You're going to be doing writing all of this stuff on your own and there might be better ways of doing it. So this is kind of boilerplate code, I would say, and it's very error prone and uh, something that you would basically copy paste for every project. But OK, so uh, that's the introduction to Lightning. I hope you're excited to learn about it. Um, if you have any questions as to do, is this worth learning for me? Uh, and any specific questions, let me know. And I'm also thinking of structuring it so that um, on every upload of new of the new sort of video, I'll do it uh, premiere so that there will be a live chat, and then I'll join in on the live chat, and then you can sort of uh, chat or ask questions uh, live, and I can respond because the videos will be pre-recorded, but I will be live in the chat, uh, and we'll see. Hopefully, that's a good uh, setup. Um, all right, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.